well, he is an orphan, so maybe I can bring that into the negotiations, offer him some sort of power, he must feel a little helpless. Maybe offer him some wealth. Maybe offer him women. Maybe offer him status. So he's thinking all of this through when he's going to come and negotiate with the Prophet Faqutila. And by the way, then because he was one of their most eloquent po poets, they wanted to send him just to see if the Prophet would, you know, uh, he could just critique the Qur'an and make a criticism of it and come back and say, yeah, yeah, it's not, I mean, it's nice, but it's not all that. It's not really that, that good. So he's planning out how he's going to make his game plan against the Prophet ﷺ. فَقُتِلَ Then may he be killed. This is a dua. فِعِلْ مَاضِي This is dua. Dua lahu, dua alayhi. This is dua alayhi, right? كَيْفَ قَدَّرْ How dare he? How dare he make these kinds of calculations? ثُمَّ قُتِلَ Then may he be killed again. كَيْفَ قَدَّرْ How he should be killed again. Or how he could make these calculations. ثُمَّ نَظَرْ Then he's looking at the Prophet ﷺ while the Prophet is reciting. And he's kind of just staring at him. نظر بمعنى أيضا تأمل يعني بدا كأنه يفكر كثيرا hmm. like he's acting like he's really listening to the Prophet he's seen as intelligent and he doesn't want to come across as you're not really listening so once this is part of his game plan if he looks like first of all his reputation precedes him he's intelligent and he looks like he's really paying very strong attention and then he's going to give his verdict means he really thought about it before he said it so the entire game plan was there. Allah called his game plan play by play. Thumma abasa. Then he frowned a little. On his forehead, there was a little bit of a... Hmm. Let me consider this. Then wabasar. Washtadda fil ubus. Any basar? Al ishtidad fil ubus. Wakuluh al wajh. Then just becoming upset. Mm. Mm -mm. So the Prophet's reciting and he's like staring. He's like... That's from ثُمَّ نَظَرْ ثُمَّ عَبَسَ وَبَسَرْ And then when he's just at this point, he's just shaking his head, he's got that like upset face, ثُمَّ أَدْبَرَ Yeah, no thanks. Turns around, shows his back. أَدْبَرَ Then he goes, that was takbar. That's word of God was takbar. Showed arrogance. Allah didn't just capture, Allah could have just said, is takbara. Kafara. Allah highlighted every single part of his mind game because it's so offensive to Allah. And Allah knows that all of it was dramatized in his mind. He thought through, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'll be like, mm -mm. I'm going to turn around and like, yeah, no, that's not the word of Allah. Seriously, you think that's revelation? That's what you want me to do? Was takbar. So when he came back, they said, so now you've heard it. What do you say? Should we call him a liar? No, you can't call him a liar. That won't stick. And nobody, everybody knows he's not a liar. So that won't work. Okay, so maybe you should call him insane. Yeah, but that's it's pretty good stuff. I don't know. Insane won't stick either. We have to have one criticism that sticks. Because if all of us have different criticisms, some of you calling him liar, somebody calling you magician, somebody calling him you know, uh, insane, all of that different allegations, then a newcomer will say, well, all of you are confused about him. Let me figure it out for myself. So let's all have a unanimous allegation that we can stick to. Because Kadib doesn't work, and Majnoon doesn't work, and Kahin doesn't work. And when, they, when he got to... Because the three major ones they had in mind was liar, insane, mind reader. Mind reader meaning he's just doing what you know, some of these you know, Magians do, or these other gypsies or whatever do. This palm reading stuff. Maybe that's what he's doing. You know, maybe we can give him that allegation. He goes, yeah, I know those guys. That's not how, what they do. This is something else. And they speak in ambiguous terms, like something will happen to you today. And then something happens to you. And they go, oh, you were right. You know, something did happen to me. So the al-kalam qad yakun hakada wa hakada. You know, it could go this way or that way. Either way it could work. His speech is very direct, very explicit, very clear. It's not the word of a kahin, not a mind reader. Now the Quraysh who are asking him his opinion are like, are you impressed with him? Because you, I mean, we brought up the three main things we could have brought up. What, what do you want us to say then? Are you becoming a believer? And he had actually believed. He did believe it was the word of Allah. But he had to come up with something to give everybody else. 
So he says, yeah, فَقَالْ إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا This is nothing but سِحْرٌ It's nothing but magic. يُؤْثَر That leaves an impact. Oh, it does have an impact, I'm telling you. It is pretty potent magic. It has an, it, it, uh, and it's يُؤْثَر also means يعني من, من الأثر وأيضاً it's passed down. أثر, it's traced. It can be traced back to other magicians. Okay? So it's some, something that he's picked up from somewhere. But yeah, it's definitely magic. Now, before we go further, we have to understand the, the, why magic is the last resort. Magic is basically something that mystifies people. People are amazed by it. People look at it and say, how did you do that? I could never do that. I don't know of any other human being that can do that. And when you do something so amazing and it can't be explained, what is the guy who's performing the trick? What does he say? It's magic. That's magic. And usually magic has to do with something that cannot be explained through common sense. That's what magic is. Magic is something so impressive and something that baffles the mind. You can't make two and two of it. It's not mathematically computable. And then you have to resort to, I have to believe in some unseen power. And instead of calling that power Allah, you don't, you don't want to take that step. But even believing in magic is believing in the in an unseen power, yes or no? Yeah. Magic, it's, the use of the word magic already indicates that you have belief in something you cannot see. The criticism of their idea, their allegation is, you are willing to say that this is not humanly possible. By calling it magic, you've already acknowledged this, isn't, this speech is not humanly possible. But you're not willing to take the leap of faith, you're willing to take the wrong leap of faith. Because even you're taking a leap of faith when you're calling it magic. At least when you were calling it liar, you're attributing a plausible explanation. He's trying to be like a mind reader, plausible explanation. He's lost his mind, a plausible explanation. When you call him a magician, then you're saying what he has is magical. It's got supernatural power, power we can't explain. So in the allegation of magician was already an acknowledgement of the power of the Qur'an. When the Prophet ﷺ says, إِنَّ لَمِنَ الْبَيَانِ لَسِحْرًا That in great speech, in clear, eloquent speech, there's magic. They experienced it. People are mystified by it, and they change who they are entirely when they hear the speech. You have to understand, it's not just, Oh, the Qur'an's mubtadas and the Qur'an's khabars. Oh my God. It's the fi'il and the fa'il. It's not just that. It has an effect on the people that are listening to it. And they become someone completely different than what they were. Look at what happens to Umar and before and after. Unrecognizable. This person is unrecognizable to the people around him. What is, how does he transform so much? What is the agent that's transforming him? I mean, they've, you, know, you could transform a, a coin into a bird or whatever and do a trick. How do you transform entire human beings? Change their entire personalities. That's the magic of this Qur'an. I'm using the word magic as they would use it. That's been passed down. هَذَا إِلَّا سِحْرٌ يُؤْثَرٌ But he, does, he wants them to know that even though it's magical, it's mystical, we don't know its origin, but he wants them to know that he's not that impressed. إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا قَوْلٌ بَشَرٌ No, 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 this is nothing but the speech of Al-Bashar. This is just the, that guy. You know, skin. Mortal being. It's nothing more. سَأُسْلِيهِ سَقَرْ We will make him climb a saqar Sakar is actually one of the names of hellfire. It's mamnu'ah min as It's not a verb here. Sakara looks like a verb. It's not a verb. It's a noun. Sakara. So sakaru, sakara, and sakara. There's no kasra on the word. It's one of the names of Jahannam. And this is used actually as a verb. They say sakarat hu shamsu. Ida hamiyat ala. They say. Uh, oh, fa'alamatu. Yeah. So when, when his fever gets really high. When the person's fever gets really high and they're walking in the sun, their head starts boiling. That's sakarat hushams. No, that's sakra. That's sakra. That's a kaf. This is seen kaf. Different word. Sakratul maut is something else. So sakar here implies that his head is going to be boiling, and he's climbing up in this intense heat. What we're going to make? We're going to throw him into it. Wa ma adraka ma sakar. What will give you any clue what sakar really is? La tubqi. It doesn't leave behind. It does. It's relentless. It doesn't let you survive. وَلَا تَذَرَ It doesn't leave you alone. وَلَوَّاحَةٌ لِلْبَشَرِ it, لوحة, From لوح. لوح means a chalkboard or a board, which is black. It turns black the faces. مُحْرَقَ Burns them up. لِلْبَشَرِ For all the skins. 
of the people. عَلَيْهَا تِسْعَةَ عَشَرْ On the Saqar, there are 19 guardians. 19 guardians over hellfire. Allah mentions this 19 guardians and the Quraysh thought it was hilarious. So 19, it's not that many. It's less than 20. It's just the teens. I could take 10 myself. What about you? You can handle line, right? We got this. That was the joke they had to, among themselves. And so Allah reveals this next ayah. Yeah, they're not 19 like you think 19. وَمَا جَعَلْنَا أَصْحَابَ النَّارِ إِلَّا مَلَائِكَةً We didn't install on top of the people of hellfire anything but angels. They're not 19 people. They're 19 angels. 19, you, you need one angel to destroy an entire town. There are 19 angels guarding hellfire. وَمَا جَعَلْنَا عِدَّتَهُمْ And we didn't put their number there. إِلَّا فِتْنَةً لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Except as a trial. A test, a difficult test for that matter, for those who disbelieve. And here's the other reason we told you about the number 19. utul kitab. So people of the book, those who were given the book before, so they may come to conviction. If they had doubts about this book, this revelation, then if they dig in their own texts and their own revelations, they'll find 19 guardians of hellfire in the most scholarly and most classified of their texts, and they will come to believe that this man had no access to that knowledge, and they'll come to iman. I'm going to talk to the rabbi about this one. لِيَسْتَيْقِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابِ And they'll say, we have no such thing probably. That's okay though, because we know you do. You do, you just haven't looked yet. Yeah. They wouldn't. It was, the previous ayah was revealed, عَلَيْهَا تِسْعَةَ عَشَرَ Then they made it started making fun. And then the next ayah came. Okay. لِيَسْتَيْقِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابِ وَيَزْدَادَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِيمَانًا And those that have believed could become more in terms of their faith. They could become something more in terms of iman. وَلَا يَرْتَابَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ And that those who have been given the book and the true believers would not ever fall into doubt. وَلِيَقُولَ الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٍ Here's another reason we told you about 19. So that the people who have a disease in their heart would get to say, wal kafirun, along with disbelievers would get to say, Mada arad Allahu bihada mathalan. What does Allah mean by this as an example? Kadalika yudillullahu man yasha. That is how Allah misguides whoever He wants, allows into misguidance whoever He wants. Wa yahdi man yasha and guides whoever He wants. Wa ma yaglamu junuda rabbika illahu. And no one knows the armies of of your master except He Himself. وَمَا هِيَ إِلَّا ذِكْرَ لِلْبَشَرِ And it is nothing but a very powerful reminder for people. You know the whole 19 thing? Yeah, fitnatan, fitnatan. مَاذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِهَذَا مَثَلًا Oh no, Allah says, عَلَيْهَا تِسْعَةَ عَشَرْ So the guy says, oh, the Qur'an has 19 over it. Meaning it's dominated by the number 19. And then he comes up with the whole 19 theory. You ever heard of this? Right? And he made a whole scheme about how the number of times the word Allah comes in the Qur'an is, a, is divisible by 19. And you know, 19, every surah has a num number of letters that are divisible by 19. And he came up with the whole 19 thing. And then some ayat of the Qur'an didn't fit his 19-ness. So he moved the words around in the ayat because apparently the Qur'an must have been changed because it didn't fit his 19 theory. Subhanallah. It does, 19 does become a fitna, don't it? Allah says it'll become a fitna. And some people will say, what's the point of it? And we'll go in crazy directions. And we saw it in our, before our own eyes. The guy wasn't from Virginia, I remember. The submitters. Crazy stuff. And it entered mainstream discussions too. There are people that Muslims have started using that stuff and started quoting it. Yeah. My question to, to people like that is, it says, alayha, ya yuhal insan. Alay, well, ha is what? Masculine or feminine? What's Qur'an? Masculine or feminine? So if you want to say it's Qur'an, it would be what? Okay, and what's the principle of the Arabic language? The pronoun goes to the closest thing. What's the closest thing? Saqar. Saqar. So, 19. <laughs> why, why you gotta go crazy? Why, why you gotta do that? Drive other people crazy too. You know? I can't believe, I can't imagine how many, I can't tell you how many people come up to me, brother, do you know about the 19 miracle? I was like, that there are 19 angels guarding hellfire? No, 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 that's actually not the truth. The truth is something deeper. 
No, it's not. This, this numerology stuff, stay away from it. It's, good for, it's not good for your health. Okay? So, Kalla, no, not at all. Well, Qamar, we swear, we, Allah swears by the moon now again. Kalla, no, not at all. Again, a, a strong repudi- repudiation. I swear by the moon. Now, when Allah swears by something, you remember the conversation? Something is about to come. That will be, this will furnish as your thought process going in a particular direction. Well, after he swears by the moon, what does he swear by? Well, layl and the night. Idh adbar, as it's turning its back. It's turning back, little by little by little. The night is receding. Well, subhi, and the morning. Idha asfar. When finally it will. Idha, see the idh and then idha. There's a switch. Idh is past. So when the night started receding. And when the morning when finally it comes and becomes completely manifest, إِذَا أَضَاءَ إِذَا kashafa, When it becomes completely obvious and exposed. So Allah is talking first about the moon. One source of light. One source of light. Limited source of light. And when you, when, if, if you only rely on the moon, you can only get so much light. And then slowly it starts, things get, start getting brighter. What's the other source of light coming? The night going back. And finally, what's going to happen? The morning is going to take over and give the entire light. This is actually the description of the state of the world at the time the Prophet ﷺ came. The only revelation left was some bits and pieces of revelation from Torah and Injil. Some truth was still there like the moon. Something was there. And slowly when the revelation started coming out, and this final revelation came. This long night, long period of darkness over humanity is starting to recede. You see, you see new light now. And what's going to happen when all of this... When, this is not just going to remove some darkness from the day. What's going to come? The full-blown morning. And it's going to be asfar. It's going to be completely manifest. Wallahu mutimmu nurihi. Allah will complete His light. This is the imagery that's being said. And then what does Allah say? What's the, what's the jawab al-qasam? إِنَّهَا لَإِحْدَ kubar. It is one of the greatest things of all. The revelation, the wahi, the ayat. They are the, one of the greatest things that have ever happened. The most powerful of the events. Events. لَإِحْدَ الدَّوَاعِي الْعَظِيمَ دَوَاعِي الْعَظِيمَ Huge events. This is a big deal, the coming of the Qur'an. The night is finally over. Six centuries almost. Six centuries of no prophets, no revelation. The world is darkening. Some light is left, like what? The moon. But now it's time for the night to go and for the morning to come. وَلَا بُدَّ مِنَ اللَّيْلِ أَنْ يَنْجَلِي Right? The night has to go. Okay? So, نَذِيرًا لِلْبَشَرِ and it has come as a warning to all people. لِمَنْ شَاءَ مِنْكُمْ أَنْ يَتَقَدَّمْ Whoever among you wants, they can take a step ahead. They can, take, they can move forward. أَوْ يَتَأَخَرَ Or they can stay back. That's your option, your choice. The morning has come, you want to embrace the light? Go ahead, you want to stay in the darkness, it's up to you. كُلُّ نَفْسٍ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ رَهِينَ Every single human being, every person, in accordance to whatever they have earned, are being held as collateral. A very heavy statement in the Qur'an. You know what collateral is? When you hold something from somebody, like a down payment, or so you, you, know, you went somewhere and you took some money and, this, and you don't have anything to give them, so as a guarantee you give them your watch or your ring or something else. Rahin. Allah says, you, whatever you've earned is being held from you, and you will be released in, accord, in exchange with your deeds. Like your deeds are your collateral. You yourself are an asset, you will be released. In exchange for your deeds. بِمَا كَسَبَتْ رَهِينَ إِلَّا أَصْحَابَ الْيَمِينَ Except the people of the right hand. Meaning they won't have to be interrogated in that way. They'll go, Allah will go easy on them. فِي جَنَّاتٍ They're going to be in all kinds of gardens. يَتَسَاءَلُونَ In all of those gardens, they'll be asking each other questions. عَنِ mujrimin. They'll be asking questions about the criminals. Not لِلْ مُجْرِمِينَ يَتَسَاءَلُونَ لِلْ مُجْرِمِينَ No, no, no. يَتَسَاءَلُونَ Anil Mujrimin. They'll be asking about the criminals. And when they ask about the criminals, then Allah will allow them to talk to the criminals and talk some trash to them from Jannah and say, Ma salakakum fi saqar. What landed you in saqar? How'd you, how did, what got you into saqar? Salaka yani adkhala. Ma adkhalakum. What was it? Well, he is an orphan.